And my question today comes from a place of taught aspects of religion, staying on a path of alignment with self when being exposed to unknown factors that are going on within your life. I have a job that responds to extreme environments. It can be anything. How, when I go through a daily task of some horrific series of events, do I keep myself focused and aligned when being exposed to extreme situations? The best way of doing that, because you know there's value in what you do. You're not doing it for no reason. So the best way to do that is to acknowledge that contrast is real and that it is of value. And that extreme contrast, in other words, we talked about momentum already. So when a lot of people are focused, pushing against a lot of things, they create extreme contrast and they create situations that when they manifest are extreme contrast. So the best approach for you to have is to step back into as much general thinking as you can by acknowledging that contrast is a good thing and that out of that big contrast is coming a big desire and therefore a big beneficial manifestation for a lot of people. Maybe generational shifts, maybe, but just the same it is happening and you get to decide how much of any of that that you choose to participate in. Some of you decide to come into this experience. Let us start again and then we'll come back to that. And if we don't, ask that question of us because we really want you to hear that about what you come in, some of you intending to do. This is how it really works. So you're standing as an individual exposed to some life, looking around feeling around, sniffing around, having experiences, and pretty easily knowing, I don't prefer that, I prefer that, I don't prefer that, I prefer that. And if you have been talking to us right around the time that that exposure is happening, and you get the law of attraction thing, and you know that you can focus, you might say, well, I know what I don't want, what is it that I do want? And why do I want it? And you might focus only upon what you want and not point in the other direction and line up with it vibrationally. So even though something unwanted caused you to give birth to that, you focused upon it so purely, because you chose to, that it manifested into your experience. So now, not only do you have the new clarity of desire and the new manifestation, boom, but you have a whole new set of contrasting things happening, different than what was before, because you're standing in a different place with a different point of attraction. So then it goes again. So you could be a person, and in fact, we see you as that, who keeps yourself pretty much in alignment. In other words, you know what you don't want, you launch, you line up with it, and off you go. So you maintain good balance working in an environment where so many people are not doing that at all. So many people just look at what they don't want, rail against it, get the momentum going against it, make up stuff about it, get everybody else stirred up. It's like they are the anti-inner being. What it comes down to in many cases is that many people would rather have negative emotion than no emotion at all. And they've been living in confinement with so many rules. You talked a little bit about religion and so many requirements and things. And somebody earlier in the day talked about shutting down, shutting down, shutting down. So a lot of people have just sort of shut down and aren't really feeling. And they don't feel anything until it's really extreme. And then it calls them because at least they're feeling. And also they're launching massive rockets of desire which could serve them in this lifetime, could serve their generation in this lifetime, but usually when it's that extreme for them, they have to croak and they feel their alignment once they're non-physically focused because they've kind of got themselves in a corner of negative attraction. It doesn't have to be that way. So the long game 
is to not feel like you're the savior of any of this because you can't fix it. You can't, in one fell swoop, get so clear about what they all want that you can focus upon what they all want because they're focusing on the opposition to what they want and you can't buck their current and it's not your job to buck their current it's your job to line up with what your intentions are so we're saying it and we know it sounds selfish and a lot of people don't want to hear it at all but what we're saying to you you just got to find a way to keep yourself in balance and appreciate them for what they're doing intergenerationally for the planet because they are they're doing something intergenerationally Esther's hearing about the war in the Middle East that started the year she was born and she thinks what is up with that you would think that somebody would have found a way to resolve that but they don't want to because they feel more alive in their war in their protest they're not looking for alignment with their inner being if any one of them was looking for alignment with their inner being that would have come to a resolution a long time ago so you ask yourself well can I do it you have a better chance of doing it than those of them that are embroiled in it because they're so embroiled in it it's asking a lot of somebody who's ducking cover to meditate <laughs> or to find the positive aspects of those that are lobbing the weapons in their direction in other words that's asking so much and their own inner beings know that it's not likely that their path of least resistance is going to be a personal one they're looking to those like you who are looking at the bigger picture that are playing the long game friends imagine imagine that you are living happily ever after because you've decided to and you are improving your prosperity because you've decided to and your stability because you've decided to and your physical well-being because you've decided to and your clarity because you've decided to and you're tuned in tapped on turned on you feel pretty darn good and then you realize there is stuff going on in this world that takes you to your knees if you really focus upon it it does not feel good so what do you do do you know that you can lightly hold a subject as your object of attention turn it over to the universe go on living happily ever after and bring benefit to that situation where if you get intimately involved in it you can be of no value at all because the likelihood of you finding the vibrational match with their momentum is pretty great so you have to decide how am I doing this is not a question that we would usually ask and as Esther's finding the words she's finding accurate words for what we are presenting to her vibrationally but we want to clarify this how much discomfort am I able to take and still stay in alignment the answer is none none so then what's the next question how can I stay in alignment while I'm seeing all of that and the answer is be like your inner being your inner being does it all day every day every one of those suffering people has an inner being who is not joining them in the battle who is calling them to love and to well-being and to clarity and so it's a good conversation for anybody to have about anybody that they care about whether it's somebody up close to them or somebody at a distance if you want to be of value be to them as much as you know their inner being is being to them as you can love them anyway understand contrast matters give them the benefit of the doubt know that there are paths of lesser and lesser resistance and if you can shine a light on that play the long game is really a good line play the long game don't try to fix everything just feel as good as you can feel and watch the way you start leaning and before you know it there's a whole lot of people that are leaning that way too everybody wants to feel that way so you would think that it would be really easy to tune into your inner being shine that toward your newborn child or toward anyone and that people would catch on and they would if they understand what you understand as a result of the conversation here today but most people aren't hearing this 
Most people are hearing that there's right and wrong. That's where most religions come down. There's right and wrong and there's good and bad. And I see that you stand in the bad pile and therefore I cannot feel good about you. And therefore I can be of no value to you whatsoever or of value to myself because of my belief about you. When you come to the place where you see the world through the eyes of source, you will write things on your daily list of positive aspects that go something like I adore my life and I love this world and I love this planet and all of the diversity in it and I honor everyone's intentions and I like thinking about them lining up with their inner being and I desire the empowerment of everyone wouldn't it be nice if insecurity wasn't a thing and everyone stood in clarity but it's got to be okay that insecurity does exist because without insecurity, what would security be? Without poverty, what would abundance be? Without sickness, what would wellness be? We would say from the human perspective, we are all in this together. And I thank you, whoever you are, for the part that you are playing. And we just wouldn't get into war with our own inner being by picking a fight with anybody because when you pick a fight with anybody you are at war with your own inner being and the agony that you feel then you want to blame it on how bad they are but it's not about them it's about your disconnection from who you really are as i respond to some of these calls sometimes i can't help but think was there a rock of desire or a desire that i had set forth at some point to help bring whatever it is to yes fruition? because you are a soother a soother is a solver you are a soother but our message to you is soothe incrementally and don't take upon yourself the responsibility of them being soothed you just be a soother can you feel the difference you just be a soother. It's up to them to be soothed. You just be a soother and give them an in-the-face option. You witnessed that here today. We stayed strong in our determination to soothe in some situations where there wasn't obvious in the beginning desire to be soothed. But unless someone is soothed, they're not receiving the benefit of their own resources and you got to get your resources from your own source you can't go to someone else that's why we sent that beautiful girl back to her seat she wants us and we don't blame her because we're really smart <laughs> she wanted us to shed some light but there isn't anything that we could tell her that she doesn't already know and doesn't already practice all the time all the time all the time all the time so there are situations where you soothe Esther was having a conversation with someone the other day and Esther just loves this pointing in this direction and not in opposition and so this person was pointing in that direction and then that one and then in opposition and more opposition and more opposition and Esther would point in that direction and that direction and that direction and then that person would too and then in the other and then the other and the other and after about a half an hour of that Esther said well if you're not going to at least try to point in the direction of what you want and of course they both laugh because they both were doing that but sometimes it's just not the time it's not because they don't want to or not because they're not capable of it just sometimes this isn't the time that's why we say your inner being always knows right where you are do you believe in the existence of your inner being we're not putting you on the spot but if you feel like answering us go ahead do you think your inner being is real yes do you think that your inner being is an extension of source energy? Yes. And do you think that you are too? Yes. Do you think that your inner being is aware of you as you are moving through your day? And do you think your inner being is enjoying your life experience, whether you are or not? And does that annoy you? Because those are not attributes of a good friend. A good friend would suffer when I'm suffering, but your inner being isn't like that because your inner being does not suffer its way out of alignment and then be of no value to you whatsoever. Oh, here it is. You cannot cease to be what you have become. And do you know how many lifetimes you've lived? Do you know how source energy you are? You can't be less than that. 
And when you are, you don't feel so good. When you pinch yourself off, you don't feel so good. 